In my last OBS Studio tutorial, I went through the very basics of downloading and installing OBS and getting it set up and running so that you can do some streaming, some Zoom calls, or whatever else you might wanna do with the software. But I didn't go into very much detail, so today I'm gonna to start with a video that explains some of the sources within OBS, what you can do with them, and some examples. So, let's take a look. <laughs> Now, before we jump into today's video, I would love to ask a huge favor. I'm a brand new channel. This is one of my first videos, so anything you can do to help me out, like, subscribe, comment, share the video, it all helps out a lot, and I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening to that. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. So, when we're in OBS, and this is our starting screen, we go down here into our sources box and we go to the little plus icon at the bottom and we just go up to the top, audio input capture. Now we can give this a name, we can leave it as audio input capture. If you start adding lots of them, you're going to want to give them all names or else you could get confused when it's audio input capture one, two, three, four, five. Now audio input capture, basically all this is, is it's your microphone. We'll call it, we'll call it Mike. Hi, Mike. All right, so it comes up as default. And if I click OK, then you can see I've got the mic auxiliary and mic. So you might wonder why there are two things on the mixing board that are displaying the same audio. So when I'm talking and the bars are going up on both of those things, why is that happening? So let's look into scene two, where I don't have any sources set up at all, and I still have mic and uh, the mic auxiliary and desktop audio. If I go back to scene one, I've got this new microphone that I've set up. So what's happening here is your OBS comes set up with a global microphone setting that's going to be enabled, and that will run in every one of your sources. So you've got a couple things you can do with this. You could just use this as your microphone if you want to have one microphone and have it consistent across every source. More likely, you might wanna have a little bit more control, in which case you're going to add the audio input capture mic over here. So you can click the volume icon right here and mute it. That's one option. The other thing you can do is if you go up to file, into settings and click on your audio settings. You can go mic and auxiliary audio and just disable that. So if I do that, now you see I have the mic that we set up here, but if I go into scene two, there is now no microphone at all. So that's audio input capture is your microphone. So if I go back into here and I click on here and then I click this properties button or I can also right click on here and go to properties. And where it says device, it's under default. So right now the default is most likely going to be the webcams microphone, but I'm not actually sure what is the default on here right now. So if we click down, we have a list of choices and it's all of the hardware or software options that could be acting as a microphone in the mind of OBS. So I've got the USB audio device, I've got my headphones, I've got NVIDIA broadcast, and I've got the microphone for Realtek Audio, which is just the laptop microphone. Um, so I'm gonna, for the sake of argument, I'll pick my headphones, and that's what I would do if I wanted to have a, a microphone that wasn't the built-in microphone right there. Perfect. After audio input capture, you've got audio output capture. And we can give it a name, Audi, sounds good. All right, we got mic and Audi. Now here it's got device default and it's got the same list of things that are gonna be showing up. So how are we gonna use this? You've got your audio output capture and basically by default, it's going to be doing the same thing that this desktop audio slider was doing. So like we had the mic and the, the, the mic auxiliary slider with the microphone slider we set up, 
you've got the desktop audio and it's going to be doing the exact same thing by default as what we set up for the audio output capture. So there's where we would use audio output capture if we wanted to go into a different scene and not have all of the desktop audio. Now the desktop audio is just whatever plays on your computer by default to whatever default setting it goes to. With the audio output capture, you can go into properties and you might have software or a game where you can select which speakers you're sending the audio to. So maybe you have a game where you are sending that audio to your, to your headphones, but then the desktop audio is still going to your, to your uh, laptop speakers. You can just then click Arctic 5 game and that's going to be the audio source that's routing through audio output. Now, like we did with the uh, microphone one before, we're going to go into file and settings. We're going to go back to audio and just take the desktop audio and disable that apply. And the reason we're going to just disable that now is because this way we have full control over what scenes are going to have audio from our computer and from what source of our computer that audio is going to come out of. Next after that, is going to be video capture device. Now this is gonna come up with that same menu, so we'll call it cam, hit enter. Okay, now it comes up with a list of options here and automatically it's gonna pull up if, there, if it recognizes a webcam, it'll put that up right away. So if you have a laptop, it's almost always gonna come up with your laptop's webcam, um, which this one is in this case. Now I've got plugged in this Logitech guy here and I can just go pick on that. We run our camera and we go into our camera properties. We can select the USB camera or we can select the built-in web camera, which is fine. The other thing, um, and I mentioned how OBS is going to recognize any hardware or software options that it sees as being a camera. So on my laptop, I've got something called NVIDIA Broadcast. It lets me do special things with my microphone like noise suppression and uh, background removal with the camera. So if I go and I click on that software option, so NVIDIA Broadcast, and I click that there, it's going to switch over and oh, there we go. I've got, you know, this is still using that same camera, just running through software as opposed to going back to this. So now if you go into configure video, you can configure all sorts of settings in here. Different, different cameras will have different optimal settings. So you'll have to play around with it. Um, in many cameras, especially with the Logitech C920, it's a common one. You'll probably want to turn off your auto exposure and um, adjust your white balance a little bit. But click OK on that for now. You can go and you can change your resolution and frame rate by probably best to leave it default, but you can change it to custom and do all sorts of things. Resolution, you can set a custom resolution, custom frame rate. Uh, you can change your video format. You've got options for your color space, your color range. Um, if you have a camera where Which thing did I, which thing did I do? Okay. If you have a camera where, you know, you plug it in and the screen comes upside down and that happens sometimes, you can flip vertically just like that. Um, and the last couple of settings here, these are the ones that you're probably uh, most likely to want to change right off the bat. So for this one, audio output mode, you can leave this as capture audio only. If you change it, then what it's telling it to do is also to output what you are saying into you know, the recording device. So you can leave it on capture audio only. But the other thing too, if you're using a different microphone, you're gonna just click on use custom audio device. And then you pick whichever thing you're gonna use with it. So if I'm gonna be using my headset or NVIDIA broadcast with it, I can click that. I'll just click on my headset for now, click OK. So now it knows that it's going to be using my headset for the microphone instead of the camera's built-in microphone. And I'm just gonna turn this off right there. Now, when you've got your sources, as you just saw, if I click on the little eyeball button there beside it, I can turn a source on and off. All right, so 
And the next source that we have beyond your audio and your video, uh, this next one is probably going to be one of the most common ones that you're going to be working with uh, within OBS and uh, really important to understand a little bit about how this works. Uh, and that is going to be the browser source. So we'll create a new browser and we'll just call it B1 and we'll click OK. So we've got a browser here right now. It's a blank browser. You can use a local file that's saved on your computer if you have something, or you can go to a URL for whatever it is. Um, so for example, if I just go to google.com and click OK, I have this pops up and it's just a web browser that's active. So go back into properties. Now I can set the width and height of the width and height of the window. If you're setting up extensions for a Twitch stream or something or having a video player, that's when you're probably going to want to adjust to specific resolutions. But everyone, every use case will be a little different here. Uh, you have the option to add your own custom CSS into an into a browser source. So you can have widgets that are browser based and you can uh, affect their behavior through the CSS scripting. Uh, these ones here, so what I was saying before, you can shut down a source when it's not visible, so it'll just turn it off, or you can leave that unchecked so it runs in the background. Um, you can also refresh the browser source when it becomes active, that might be important. Um, and then page permissions are here as well. If you're having troubles with a widget or an animation or some other browser-based uh, source that you have going on, um, you and it's not uh, maybe it's not syncing up properly or something. You can refresh the cache of the current page, and then it's just going to kind of do exactly that. Refresh the cache of the current page. I don't need to explain that. All right. So you've got your audio input, your audio output. You've got your cameras or your video input. It doesn't necessarily have to be a camera, um, and you've got your browser source. So so there's one other source that I want to talk about. And that is a scene source. So you can create new or you can add an existing and it doesn't really matter. We'll click scene two and click okay. You, have, you don't see anything, but you can add a scene to a scene. And that's all I really wanna say about that. And I'm gonna use it in the next uh, source video um, to show a couple examples anyway. So just know it is possible. You can put a scene into a scene and the sky's the limit. But we're gonna talk about how important that is in videos coming up in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it to the end, leave a smiley face emoji in the comments below. Let me know that you've been paying attention. Um, otherwise, like I said before, like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Check me out on all my other social channels. There'll be links in my description. I hope to see you next time here on the Beardo Computes. Thank you so much for watching.